house of the Lord. Let us humbly confess our sins against Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought not to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind. In Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant the most merciful Father for his sake that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty and merciful Lord, grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall put forth our praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen.
A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, in, if, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who has raised Jesus from... <coughs> If the spirit of him who has raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ provided we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. sat down and the whole crowd stood on the beach and he told them many things in parables saying a soul went out to sow and as he sowed some seeds fell along the path and the birds came and devoured them other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil and immediately they sprang up since they had no depths of soil but when the sun rose they were scorched and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. But seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. 
And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thy way be known upon earth. Thy way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants. And that we may receive what we ask. Teach us by your Holy Spirit to ask only those things that are pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you in the same spirit lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. O God, who makest us glad in the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee, that the days to come may be spent in thy favor, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed, sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before thee for all members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve thee, through our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. Amen. Coming. 
Should we be really discerning and choosy and make sure that we're very careful about where we go and plant the seed, where we proclaim the kingdom of God or proclaim the gospel? Well, we're going to take our lead from the soul here, who's God himself. And as the parable tells us this morning, God is not stingy about where he scatters the seed. He's not very, very careful. He goes, he takes the seed and casts it out everywhere. Everywhere. You just never know where the seed is going to, is going to take root. You don't. Our job, following God, is just to cast it out. Now, truth is, as this parable says, not everywhere that it's going to go is going to take root. You know, we heard that. Some places it was going to be stony. Some places, well, it took root. It was going to be real shallow when the first time the wind blew, it was going to get ripped. Rip, you saw all of this. But you never know. You see, sometimes, sometimes, it takes root in the most unexpected places with the most unexpected people. That's the point of the gospel here this morning. All right? The power of the seed to take root comes from God, not from the goodness of that of one person or another or the goodness of the soil. It comes from God. And he says, you just go out and scatter. And don't you be the judge as to where, it, uh, where you think it's going to take root or not. Okay. That's what this is saying. That's between, that's between them and God. This is, this is how grace works. I mean, the people in Capernaum and Bethsaida and, uh, and Chorazim that we heard about last week, they thought they were the perfect soil. I was going to take root and things. And the Lord said, oh, no, it isn't. Okay? He said, I could have went to that poor soil in Sodom and Gomorrah, and it would have taken better root than what it did amongst you. All right? So that's what we hear in this one. The gospel, the proclamation of the kingdom of God, God's grace is often to everybody. Everybody. We cast it out. I was once on a, a book, the, uh, a, the Commission on Missions in a Diocese, and on new missions. And I was horrified, because what they wanted to do was they said, well, we want to go and study and take, and take a look. We want to make sure we're going to go and put it in a place that we know it's going to take root, and we know it's going to become self-sufficient. And uh, we know that it's not going to require much from the diocese, and that's what they were thinking. Of course, who was being left up? The inner city. They were closing up those churches where the gospel needed to be heard. Truth is, as I try to tell them, though they, they, they found me an irritating person at times, is that the, the, that soil may be more fertile to take root than what you think. So, it's what happened. I, I served my term out there. Some of them said, Phew. Because they, they, they didn't want to hear about the inner city. They didn't want to hear about rural communities. Okay? They would look at a place like Baltimore and they'd say, why would we want to put money in there? I'm, I'm being honest with you. That's the way they were thinking. I think we're get, I'm getting about to my time now. But that's why we need to hear this gospel. That's why we need to hear it, because that's what our job is. We're called to scatter the seed of the kingdom of God all over and not make any judgment to whether or not we think it's growing in the worthy soil or not. We go and we scatter it and let God take care of how and when it takes root. Okay? That's what grace is all about. So that's our job, to 
to scatter the seed, proclaim the kingdom of God, tell people about the truth of God's grace to all sinners like you and me. Amen. Amen. and teachers for justice and peace in the world and your protection over those who serve in the military, police, and firefighters, especially. Trevor Anthony, Eric Rabeau, City Police and Fire, Alex Murray, Jackson Williamson, Collins and Fire and Rescue, Logan Thomas, Christian Williamson, Collins and Jerry Carmen, Keith Bailey, are there others? Oh, well, most mighty and merciful God, in this grievous sickness, we flee to you for comfort. Deliver us, we beseech thee from our peril. Give strength and skill to those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use 
for their cure. And grant that perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leads us to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Most loving Father, you will will us to give for all thanks for all things, to dread nothing but the loss of you, and to cast our care on the one who cares for us. Preserve us from our faithless fears and worldly anxieties, and grant that no clouds of this mortal life may hide from us the light of that love which is immortal, and which you have manifested unto us in your Son, Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Increase, O God, the spirit of neighborless, neighborliness towards us, that in peril we may uphold one another, and suffering tend to one another, and in homelessness, loneliness, or exile befriend one another. Grant us brave and enduring hearts that we may strengthen one another until the disciples and testing of these days are ended. And you again give peace in our time through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on your church and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a priest for St. Jude's, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will preach the gospel, care for your people, equip us for ministry, and lead us forth in the fulfillment of the Great Commission through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. All right. First, are there any birthdays or anniversaries here? Not this morning. Well, it's good to see you here. And we pray for those who cannot be here or are not ready to be here. We're doing our best to make sure that this gets uh, on, we have our own YouTube channel now. We've gone, we've gone fancy, uptown if you will. And uh, it's been, I'm sorry that we haven't been able to get it on by Sunday yet. And uh, uh, we're trying our best, but it, things just get complicated. But we're ironing stuff out. You know what that's like. All right. Uh, other announcement. Some of you received, maybe some of you didn't, but uh, Bishop Lawrence has uh, asked for the election of a bishop coadjutor. What that is, that's a bishop who comes in and it's a transition period in which to replace his existing bishop. And uh, the way it usually works with bishops in that transition it's going to be about 18 months that it takes to do all of that, the transition. He'll be 72, and 72 is when the tradition of the bishops of this diocese retired. And in fact, in the church we came from, the Episcopal Church, it was required that every priest and every bishop submit their resignation at the age of 72. The, uh, the congregation or diocese could could refuse to accept it, but usually it's, it's accepted at that point. But do, do keep them in in your prayers. This is it's it's been a it, it's been a draining time for him and, uh, and Alice. So, and I don't have any other announcements that you don't know about. Does anybody have anything? We should, okay, Bob, go ahead. I have two things. One is treasure. I'd like to thank our people for their continued support of St. Jude's. The future is very much uncertain. Uh, gratefully, so far, um, <laughs> pledges are on target. They're, in fact, a little bit ahead. It's due to no reason, but nonetheless, it's through your support. And the only thing that we've been lacking, and it could be, is to be expected when we sit here with less than half of what we normally have on any given Sunday, open pledges, offering is offering it. Because that's paid through those who don't pledge to come. But nevertheless, we're getting an open pledge. So we're most grateful for that. So 
Thank you very much for that and continue your support. Um, the, the second thing I was going to say of a personal nature of Marvin Jones, we've been praying for his brother Gregory for quite some time now. Gregory has been fighting cancer for over three years and I had an opportunity to see Marvin earlier in the week and, and apparently Gregory's on his last leg and he's they expect less than a month to go and it could happen anytime. But I give him a little special prayer. I know Gregory personally, last time I saw him, we, we were like an upper con. Gregory was coming down with his family. It was about this time last year, we had a great visit. A great person just as Marvin. And so if y'all want to pray special for him and that family, Marvin will have lost now two brothers. I think within a year or so. That's tough. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm going to uh, join in the general thanksgiving. Thank mm -hmm. you.